Right, so we just got this bush in. It's not for testing, it's obviously fully working. I'm taking the... Well, I say it's not fully working, but... I'll put it on to rinse and spin. <clears throat> We're halfway up. Surely this has got a time out in a mini. There's the suspension dropping. All the weight. It's got to stop. It's gonna keep going, isn't it? Okay. Might need a boil wash out, maybe. It's usually one good way of getting rid of any, you know, build up within the uh, pressure switch chamber. Obviously what it should do is naturally drain and then once it's empty it goes into spin mode.
Yeah. I'll just pull myself. Why? So it looks like the lower the drain pressure is better. So it knows where it is. So it could just be rinse and spin only. I'm just going to try it again on rinse and spin only. Again. That has been one of them. If it's uh, shifted some crud or maybe because there was... Well, I was going to say there's no water in the bottom. There was. It hadn't been emptied at the bottom like I normally do. Hopefully it's disturbed the crud in it. Maybe. <clears throat> if it fills up again to the same level, I'll probably just like go, yep, that's fine. It, nah, I think it normally comes up to about there, actually. But, that also being said, this won't be any different for this size machine as it would do, say, the 12 kilo. There we go. We've got this to test at some point, this hot point WMBF 742. Uh, as much as I'm going to test it, probably, you know, I'll put, I, it probably will work. So there's a bit of, um, I'm going to sh like show you something. So we've got this, it's got the white lock on. Cool. Um, I will. I think this still works. Um, and there's a reason. Uh, fast cold cycle. I wonder if that's like fast 30. Anyway, we'll have a look at that at some point. Another one. Um, so I've got this Samsung fridge freezer. I uh, don't know if it works. Again, don't know if it works. But that and that hot point were both thrown out by the same house. So, one of them are going to work. I just don't know which one. <clears throat> Typically, people don't buy two appliances at the same time. What they tend to do is buy, they might have one that's broken, then decide, well, while we're at it, we'll buy whatever, another one. So, one of these isn't going to work. I don't actually do fridge freezers, but I took a punt on it because I thought one of them is going to be broken. Right. 
This hot point, uh, this hot point dryer, true, what model is it? Uh, now this um, story begins about six, seven years ago. Uh, I didn't actually know what was wrong with it, but a lot of people, some people thought elsewhere. So this would, this was roll, like turning half turns at the time. Uh, I've given it to fix. And it just seems to work. Fine. I was like, what? What is wrong with it? Uh, and then it started doing it. And I thought, alright, it's so all ready to go back. And then plugged it in and it started doing the half turns again. Turns out it was the timer. I, uh, some, a lot of people on, some people online figured that out. Um, but because this was a family friend, they took it back and then put the hot point care package on it so for 89 quid a month 89 quid a year you know it covers all breakdowns but i think they only did it for 12 months so they could get this fix in other words it's cheaper than one one call out so they got the time replaced and at the time this wasn't modified so the when they came out they did the modification while they're at it anyway cool story short fast forward a few years and they ended up with that beko nine kilo condenser that i did the other week Month, I don't know, testing 38. There you are, at Becco. So, and then this was in, uh, put, put in the garden basically, uh, intending to fix. Now, Paul seems to think it was the belt, but the belt's intact. So I took the side off and it's intact, although, albeit, you know, that. However, uh, the drum doesn't turn at all, so the bearing seized, but I'm wondering whether it seized and that is the reason why it didn't turn, or whether the capacitor just went on it. Who knows? Anyway, I'm not really going to bother, I'm going to scrap this down in the end, because it's been sat outside for such a long time, everything's just started to rust. So, I'm just going to take everything off while I can. And this body at the... I know Paul's own one is quite damaged, but that's just as damaged, look at the bottom so you know we've got it's all cracked and broken so I'm not gonna really bother it because if I start thinking about it it's like well you need a belt and then we need a rear bearing uh no a rear not a rear bearing a rear um shaft you know and the motor's quite rotted is that seized who knows so instead of playing about messing about we'll just scrap this in the end that's that, that's gonna go. Uh, Paul's also brought me this a door is one of his daughter's washing machines to fix. Uh, now I've never seen this before on any of these um, media made Kenwood logic machines. This has somehow kind of flicked out so it won't start. But uh, turn the drum and um, you'll find that the bearings are fine, the spider's fine, but you can hear scraping. There's rubbish or something under there, and the door seal is, of course, full of mould. Oh, and um, there's the liquid tab. Yeah. Surprisingly, it's not rusted or anything like that. It's in the cellar. Paul's one still there. Paul's actual drive still there. Doesn't really matter at the minute. They've got the belt broke again, so I'm not too. I'm gonna have a look at. Uh, Probably, I'm probably going to look at the front bearing pads because I think that's causing it actually rather than the jockey wheel. But it has snapped, actually. so do it again. Oh, and then this came off the street. Um, this guy's hose and uh, thingy cut off FML 942. So this is a nine kilo, but basic, you know, machine. Anti-stain white. I think this is getting quite on, on a bit. Now this, this will turn. Really? There's no belt. Well, the belt's come off, or something like that. But there's no play at all in the spider. The drum bearings are fine, so why has the belts come off? I don't know. 
Maybe the belt just got stretched. It is, of course, mouldy as well. Although, that also being said, when I took the filter out, a load of powder came out. So, but it was set to 20. It was actually genuinely set to 20 when I picked it up. So, there's that. Uh, have I ever shown you if I haven't shown you this one, this is a WMF UG 742. Um, but, you know, uh, of course, the spider's snapped on it. Oh, the door seal's actually got a hole in it as well, so. That quality got sold and came back. I've still never done that. I need to plug that in. Uh, and another thing. Um, other than that, everything's pretty much as it was last time. Yeah, we've got some scrap. Scrap. Oh, that bush is still there. Uh, right, and then these two fridge freezers. Uh, fridge freezers. Fridges. Both fully working. Look at that. They're actually clean. They're just full of um, sawdust. How's that? Hey. They're nicely working. It's one of them a modern Curry's Essentials. That's the Curry's Essentials one. And that's a Curry older one, actually, I think. Hmm. Who knows? There's a thingy down there. Could have a badge inside, isn't there? There. And this is A, Curry's Essentials. C-U-L 55-W-12. This is another Curry's Essentials. You can see the design difference, though. Like, the cavity between there and there is different, so this will have less litres. Um, the design of everything as well is also different as well, despite both being Curry's Essentials. Hey, yeah, Curry's Essentials, C-U-L, 55, C-U-L, 18. So that's an 18, and that's a lot. 12. So, yeah, it does show you a difference. Uh, we got them ones at work, actually. At work. Um, so they had two fridges in the garage. These were in the garage where I picked them up. And um, they're not being used, so yeah, get rid. Other than that, uh, this has been sorted out. We're okay, getting there. I will do an actual proper tour one day. That is now all complete. All the way down. How cool is that? Right. Right. So, the problem with the spinning results is as follows. Stupid camera. Yeah, so the valve must be broken. Only ever slightly, because this has been sat for 20... Might be longer than that, actually. Might be longer than 24 hours. Uh, let's see. I oh, know, because I took them out yesterday and it's 24 hours. 26 hours later, it's been sat like that. Door open! Hmm. So, I can't actually quite tell which valve's broken since it's barely dripping from inside the drawer, but it must be dripping from inside the drawer. Right. So it needs a valve. I'm not going to do it now because I'm going to do assess for wash race. But at least with this wash race, like um, you know, I'll be back basically when the machine finishes, so it doesn't really matter. It won't really affect the result too much. So I'm going to drain it out, and then we'll uh, do that. Right. See you in the next wash race. Now let's test this logic out. Now this is from my electrician builder family friend who's done me this room. Um, it's one of his daughter's uh, machines. Came out of the back, it lives in the basement so it's very dusty. And dusty but not really that dirty because it's just 
have been sat there and debated. Right. <clears throat> Um, all it was is that the start button had popped out. That was it. Um, but that was being said, there is a noise. Uh, and there is a wrapper, basically, within it. Um, I just, I took the heater out and the, um, from, and the sun path, but it was too far back to get. So I'm hoping that it'll probably just melt away. Um, it needs to go clean. It will have a door seal changed over at some point. It will have its drawer cleaned at some point. But for now, we'll just t try and we'll test it to make sure it fully works and doesn't leak or anything like that. Right, power on. Temp doesn't want to work. It will, but not temp. Most of the buttons don't want to work. Why is this? Tempo really doesn't want to work on this, which is annoying. So, I might just take the board off at some point. Try again. Right, so what I'm going to do is pour. We'll put it on baby care. Um, we're going to pour in some acid and then put it on baby care. Yeah, that's why they got they didn't be broken in the first place because they've been pushing it and it just won't work, will it? Power's fine, delay works, speed starts going iffy, temperature really doesn't work, and all the start. So Now I'm gonna try again, um, but <clears throat> it is, I think, the actual buttons themselves. There's actually very slight blackening, very slight, but like nothing major. Because it is pushing against the button. That is pushing against it, but it's not doing anything. Hmm. I was the camera one on, but it's wired up differently. I wouldn't mind putting the camera one on. It doesn't matter, does it? Well, <sighs> shame really. I say that. That's just reversed. That's reversed. Right, so stuck a board on. We've now got a logic wood. <laughs> uh, so the cam wood that I stripped down a few uh, about uh, two years ago, the boards now come off that and put onto there. We knew we were fully working at a time. I could put the black logic one that I had. It's exactly the same board as the cam wood one. Now, what tricks you? What trips people up? Um, if you look at the connections, they're kind of reversed a bit. So, but basically, you just turn the plug upside down, and that's it, and then it goes in that way. 
Right, all I'm going to do is quick 40. So we're going to put an express, put it on 40. And go to 1200, that's weird. And it's still apparently 19 minutes. So I was going to quickly test stuff like the heater. Drain, fill, pump, make sure it heats. Um, and then, because it's already got the citric acid in, hopefully that'll kind of start decomposing everything. Motor's fine. The only difference between the 6 kilo and the 7 kilo is the length of the cotton standard wash. Other than that, they're both exactly the same. Cotton standard wash is about 10 minutes more, 13 minutes more than, it's 15 minutes more, 3 hours 21 for the 6 kilo and it's 3 hours 36 for the 7 kilo, so um, not a major difference. I'll immediately up to 1800 watt, the heater works. There's a lot of interference going on, but... So I'm not entirely sure what's that about.
appear this to have worked absolutely fine. So, pull all these bolts back on. I'll do, um, I'll set it up for a normal uh, descaler wash. And then we'll um, <clears throat> do some actual washing in it. Right, let's see if this works. I'll leave that running now. Uh, that noise is fine, it's the motor. Right, we're going to plug in this Samsung fridge freezer. Let's see if it works. Right, give me a second. Right, so it switches on. I put super cool on. So that will obviously make it work. Uh, chill. Let's see if it chills. In really clean condition, that's the thing. Bridge. And the freezer. So we'll see if it chills. This is this hotpoint WMBF seven four two. So what? So we'll put it into test mode. And we'll see what happens. So, it's that temperature here.
The bushes are worn out. dishwasher back in. It, can't, it did trip the electrics a few times at my house and then it worked fine but then I put it in again and thinking that you know it being outside originally was what was causing it to kind of blow a bit and this time it completely blew the electrics again. Uh, this time it absolutely stinks like it proper fired and it now stinks of smoke. I was actually looking down at this heater down here and I'm not completely sure whether this heater is the drying one or a wash one but you look down at it and you can see how kind of rusty it is or burnt so even if this did work it wouldn't have had long left so I've had it for a while I was gonna do some um, I was going to do a wash video and then followed by you know some test videos but it looks like that's going to go out the window and it's going to go to the scrapyard. Hmm. Right, I'll take some bits off it I think and then we'll scrap the rest. Uh, I'm going to say some bits, I mean literally like the wash blades and that's about it. <clears throat> the wash blades and the filters. Maybe the runners as well. We'll see what we can get off. But it's had it, really. Um, I suspect that it's some kind of thermostat or a heater. But other than that, or the wash motor itself. Yeah, it needs to go in the bin. <laughs> okay, so we even after like five minutes, there's still smoke coming out of it. Right. Yeah, this is on fire, isn't it? Um, but I can't tell where. <laughs> I think it's just coming out of the. I think it's the motor. Like, like it's not coming from the panel. It's coming from like inside here. Might be that. Either. So. There we go. Now let's test this out. Um. That picks up on the street. Hot points, FML. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, somehow they managed to bend and get that in the washer. Impressive. Now, there was no belt. I can't understand why, because it actually does seem to be fine. We've got a Bosch style filter and pump. And now I can't get it in. It could be just a stretch belt, in which case I'll stick a belt on and we'll go from there. But anyway, let's just test it out. Now, kind of like, this is an odd model as well, so. 
Ah, oh, I got it now. No, I didn't. Why is the test procedure different on this? Mm. And now it's flashing at me. Why? <laughs> Not working. I don't get it. Why well, have we got an error code already? Like it's perfectly fine. And somehow I managed to not get the filtering right. I hate these Bosch ones. They're rubbish. Why did you change them? Just to note, these are the Bosch ones from, say, the Bosch Max. And Bosch Classics, and they were diet. They are diet rubbish. Got one for like a Bosch Logics on. Incidentally, the one it's on the Max as well for some reason. You're absolutely fine. Not rubbish. I know we can't this up. That's pointless. Absolutely pointless. Again. This works fine and it doesn't push electric or whatever. I'll put the belt on and just go from there really. Because what, what, why else is it being thrown out? Heaters on. Well, cool thing about the test mode is that it will heat up to forty, and you can actually adjust it to go downwards using the temp dial. So you can either heat it at thirty or cold, because twenty is not a temperature. Uh, same with spin speed, I think it's limited to a thousand, but you can actually go slower than that if you want.
So, it could be just the belt. Oh. There's no serial numbers or anything. Right, that, no serial numbers. Now, let's take a look at this Qualtis that I bought for spare and repair on Facebook. Um, apparently the drum doesn't spin around. Okay, so I went to go turn the drum and I thought, it's not going, but actually it does actually move. Just, it's just stiff, like really stiff. Oh, for some reason. Anyway, we'll turn it on then. All right, let's uh, select the program. Yeah, you see, this program dial no longer works at all. So you can have cottons, but you can only have cottons. Um, all these over cottons, you can have high and low heat, which isn't too bad. And you can have the sensor dry or time dry. That's neat. Bit of a glitch there. So the motor's fine, there's just definitely no belt. Well, sort of. Because it sounds like there is a belt when you turn the draw. What's going on? Let's just leave that running for a minute and we'll uh, see. We'll open the bottom up and see if we get a flow of heat. Yes, we are. But it's not going round and the program dial is broken. So there we go, that's uh, hmm. missing a chunk. Uh, I don't like these bases on these hot points at all. The base always uh, breaks. I think that's just the front though, luckily. So there we go. So we'll um, have a look then. Oh, also, but this may get just traded in at the end of the day. There's no pot rivet at the back. Which is a shame, really, because it's a cultist. Mind you, if that was being sad, got me own. Which is actually pot riveted. It has been modified and they broke very shortly after it got modified so my silver one just needs fixing <sighs> this camera needs fixing too well, we'll just do a quick wash on this so this was another oh. um known as Mikey Matic machine that I bought from him. It's not been used for two years. I really think you need to put it on off, don't you? Yeah, that's it. Alright, he's given me two um, tub seals. I think they're just spare. Uh, but it's full of what can only be described as rusty dust. Uh, so I'm just going to put it on a, a short wash. Make sure it heats. Um, I'll put it on nylon.
it does, it did do a spin, you know. What's N again? Spin dry. Not that long ago. So it's an A33, 3670. Um, also, we're not quite sure if it is an allergic 1100. Because this is a replacement draw. We're not entirely sure it's off the right one. Maybe 1200. But that also being said, to be honest, it wouldn't matter if you had 11 or 12, it would have been pretty much the same. Time. More than likely. So it hadn't been used for two years. I bought it a few months ago. And then I did a spin. So, P is bio pre wash because it will fill, heat, and then just stop. A is obviously normal pre wash. Let's see. Okay, we'll try fast cooling design. So doing this very quickly, if you give me a top seal, he did actually, when he sold it, like he did mention, I think there's no problem with it, like minor problems that it can be easily repaired. Um, it might be there's a leak on the top seal, might need doing. But I think he bought the spares because they're spare. I don't mind too much of a leak, as long as it's like, you know, not pouring out. If it's just like a dribble, like say the Creeder, the Creeder's top seal probably needs doing on it, because that leaks, the, that, that Creeder washer dry that I've got. But it's only a tiny leak, and it doesn't seem to be dripping on anything to trip the electrics, so, eh. Seriously, like heating.
It is like it's nothing obvious. Yet. Okay, so there's actually a tiny leak and um, it's actually just from the door seal and only from higher up. It's coming here, look. But other than that, it's fine. So, I'm happy at that. Continue with it. Ah, so like, welcome to my latest two acquisitions. This Bosch Logix 10, new dimension. Um, and this Bosch Logix 10, new dimension, tumble dryer. Um, now, I bought these in good faith that these were both fully working. Um, I think the washer probably actually is. Um, but then as I was loading it into the van, the father of the daughter selling them said, oh, she mentioned about the relay fault, uh, the fault with it, with the dryer. This was the dryer. Don't appear to be anything with wrong with the washer, apparently so. So anyway, so here's the problem. So what I'm going to do now, here's what's odd. You can barely see that. And the display is designed so it's actually aimed towards you from standing at an angle. So it's a bit hard to see. There we go. Right, so if I go from off to any other setting, it'll just come up with zero and anti crease end. That's it, that's all it does. So we're going to put it into test mode. So if we select start and low heat and then switch it on, hang on. So there we go, we'll put it into test mode and we e we get E18. If I press start on the first setting, and we get C08. Then if we select dairy dry, the motor works. And the display goes out. That's quite a big relay if, if, if I can hear that. So everything works. What? Well, I'm going straight to two. Well, that is the heaters. Oh, that's cool. Ready? One. Nothing. Two. 
So I think they're the three heats. Basically you've got cold, warm, and hot. So you put hot on, you can smell it. You can smell the dust burning from it. This hasn't worked for a while. You can tell. So it does heat, pretty fine. I've got that one drying. So I think some of these are going to be due to do with a condenser version that obviously this board was never fitted to. Well, but not in this country anyway. No, uh, you can't see it, that's the trouble with that. So, there we go. Okay, this is a little, little bit of a demo of everything about it. It goes drying, go for to iron dry, then to cool dry, then anti crease dry, and yeah. Hi. Hello. That doesn't make sense. And it immediately goes to anti-crease and end. Um, so it looks like it's all working, apart from the fact that it won't reset at the end for some reason. Um, you can get it to blip ever so quickly to go to 2 hours 46. So it's 2 hours 46 for a full load. Um, this will just use a 3 kilowatt heater. Uh, this will use the same standard heater as the normal dryer, I think, pretty much, because it runs on a 13 amp. And 58 minutes for easy cat. You can get to blip to that momentarily. But it goes off. So, don't know what's going on. And he's looking into. Um... The dad said that he'd replace two relays and he said it's the final relay that's gone. He could only replace the two relays at the time he had it in stock, but not the final relay. And that final relay's gone, apparently. So, it's probably it's that on the board, apparently. Um, so, the new board's at 80 quid. So, I'll find that. If it is true, I'll probably just install a new board. And we'll go from there. Yeah, let's plug this in. Um, this creeder. Um, obviously you have frontal or back vent venting. I'm gonna put front venting on the. There is a cover for it. It's on the back. In it. Um, it matches obviously the wash the washer dryer. Obviously I haven't got the washing machine, but the matter we'll just stick with the washer dryer. I have seen it before where people have had a washer dryer and a dryer. Often because the dryer is broke on the washer, <laughs> the washer dryer. So I'm gonna plug this in. It's got a buzzer as well. Uh, 
Mine is covered by nose as well. Whoops. Minutes. Got a unique dial. We've also got uh, eco drying, which is your variable sensor drying. Um, this doesn't push in or pull out like the, the washer. Got a buzzer apparently as well, but so far. If they brought a buzzer in or out, it doesn't seem to do anything. Um, the EcoSense light is on. It's actually warms up as well already. Oh, yeah, it has a reverse tumbling. I know the filter's right in front of it, but you can obviously see. Just about. Do you think about that filter at the front there? That's going to get slowly fogged up. So that screen's going to change. Let me think about that. That's quite cool. Done. Actually, these are dry in 20 minutes. Clearly working. Right, let's test again, but this time I'm going to put it on um, E. See what happens. Right, let's take a look at this. Uh, this uh, Hot Point Aquarius 7 kilo condenser it is modified. Um, that works. So I'm going to just quickly do it, put it on program 12. Fine. It turns fine, um, but apparently it's not heating. 
So I suspect straight away, same as very common with all hot points, it's the stats. Um, but oddly, if you would normally a stat normally trips because um, there's loads of fluff usually on the heater. Now unless there's loads of fluff inside the actual machine, which I don't think it is, because the way the, the difference between say the vented, I'm gonna go around here like this, the vented and the condenser is that the vented takes its air from inside the actual cabinet from underneath. The condenser takes its air from circulating around here. So it takes its air from the front. Hence why it's sucking in right now. It actually sucks the air in. So in other words, the only way for fluff to get behind the heater like it did say on that indice that I had would be to not clean the condenser. But the condenser is completely clean. They cleaned it. Or unless they cleaned it and after the trip to starts, in which case it would have been too late. Who knows? Because if your condenser is full on one of these, it will eventually clog the airflow and stopping the airflow will increase the heat. And the increased heat will eventually trip the stats. I'm thinking that this is completely cold. Yeah, it's completely cold. Sounds like the actual main board on this is in the actual board, the top board. It doesn't appear to be a bottom board. Maybe one down here when I open it up, but we'll soon see. But it sounds like all the relays and all everything's in here. First thing we're going to do is check the heater and its stats, and then if not, it will be unfortunately a relay fault. Unlikely, but it could be. Can't run anything now. Right, let's see if this hot point now works. Uh, we've set the stat. I've only reset the stat. Now, the trouble is, once the stat goes, it could do actually replacing because it gets weakened. So it's more likely to trip again. Also, we don't still don't know exactly what's causing it to trip. Um, so, we'll plug it in and we'll have a go again. Now, whilst before we do that, um, we'll have a quick look at this cream tumble dryers result. It actually has sensor dried faults. Now you can actually see the filter has a little bit more fluff in. And they are fully dry. <laughs> the sensor drying works on this. That is amazing because the hot points that I've had with sensor drying of this area, say the 80s or 90s, don't work. But this one does. Oh, and the Bosch does as well. To come to think of it. So, how cool is that? We've got a fully working creator. Hmm. Right, let's see if it heats this time. Pump works. Just heard it go clunk, clunk, clunk. Clunky, 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 clunk. Uh, so, a couple of things, there's a few other jobs I need to do on this. Um, the rear bearing has dropped, so it is wearing away. Um, that's a cheap and easy job. And the return pipe, or should I say, this box here, it snapped where the return pipe goes back down to the pump. So, that will be replaced as well. I will replace the actual stats with a new one because once they trip, they can trip again and again and again. So, um, oh, and we're heating. Just quick. Pull the dryer down. Um, we're going to put in bedding and then we'll see if it sets the dries. Cool. Right, let's take a look, let's see if it's dried. 
It's bedding, so if it does ball up, it ends up drying prematurely. Actually, we're fully dried. Near enough. There is maybe slight moisture where it balled up towards the end and then it's the side too, obviously. No, it's fully dried. Cool, well done. Right. I'll uh, clean this at some point. Uh, do the bearing at some point and then uh, we'll go from there. Right, let's test this out slightly. We're not going to do a full real test. Um, as in, we're just going to switch it on. We're just going to put it on spin only for now. But everything's set up ready for a wash. But I, I'm going to do it sort of Monday. Uh, pull the creed rocks off that needs working on. So, um, what we have done, we ha I've bought cheap this Miele PW6055 Plus. Um, now it's a 240 volt, fine, but it's a 30, well it's 25 amp. In other words, you can't run it off a 13 amp. Well, you can. So what I found out and what I've been told off Facebook, um, off the UK Facebook group, UK Miele Facebook group, is if you disconnect the uh, heater, one of the heaters, because it's got two, um, then you'll be able to do it. Of course you will. This is rated at 5.1 kilowatt. Take one of the heaters off, you've only got 2.6 kilowatts or 2.5 kilowatts. Uh, and believe it or not, um, it's quite simply set up up here as well. They are literally your relays for your heaters. This is a pygmy. This one comes off a pygmy there, or that one. Uh, but that actually attaches to the heater on the first heater. On the second heater, this is obviously just a pygmy off that pygmy off that instead. So it doesn't matter. So I've taken the second heater. I've undone it down at the heater and I've undone it at the top. Now, we don't know exactly what's going to happen. So what I'm going to do is switch it on. I hope it doesn't blow up for starters. Oh, the other thing is we've now we've switched a cable over. That's the only thing, only thing I've done. The, the original cable is just too thick. It's a 25 amp cable. So I'll put a 13 amp cable from that scrap Miele, uh W985 that I scrapped a few years ago. Right, so let's switch it on and see what happens. Let's go hard with it, ready? Right, so it's not going to open the door because the NTC isn't plugged in. I'm just going to have a quick look on how it was already set up. Partly because I want to see how long the cycles are. It's still only 49 minutes. Um, on the original setting. So. And that doesn't control the door. Hmm. Let's try and get this into service mode, which is quite hard to do because there's no on off button. Uh, commissioning mode, shall I say. Right, so I don't, I, I've not, I think I've done it three times, not five. It seems to recognise. So it's done 11,176 hours. That's a, a few more than my other PW, which has done, I think, about 896 up to now. Probably not even that. So it's getting towards its, uh, let's see, it controls. Right, this won't work ready. Ooh. Uh, let's get this unlocked then. So let's try and get it again into commissioning mode. It's got a few faults on it. We've got an F02 and an F15. 
Man, should I just come up with that 15? I wonder if it's anything to do with that I've unplugged it all. Maybe I need the relay all plugged in for it and just unplug at the bottom. ta -da! So I must have did it wrong the first time around. So anyway, language, sort languages. So it's cooling. On. That's good. Time of day, supervisor level. Oh, code. That's it. Back. So these aren't normal settings. Standby memory, temperature, favorites, logo, meal logo, customer logo. I think you got a. You can attach in and you can put your own customer logo in if you want. So if, let's say, I don't know, which washer's laundry will come up, come up when you switch it on, but there's got no one off. So I'm not entirely sure how it's going to work. Language menu, intensive and water plus. So how is, so we're going to switch it on. Water plus, water plus level. So water plus an extra rinse. We don't auto load control. You can have it on or off. This one only has half load. P wash water, uh, cold, because we're just going to run everything on cold. Um, this is important. Main wash water, it'll add on 10 minutes. Rinse water, you want cold. Low water pressure, we haven't got that. Water level, all low water pressure does, um, if you have got it, uh, it basically, it switches off the alarm if it takes too long. Water level. Block parameters. Block parameters. Now this has got a lot more settings because mine doesn't have this on the other Milo. P-Wash temp, P-Wash duration, I'm going to add on that duration. So P-Wash actually needs to P-Wash, not just to mess around with. There you go. I don't want eight minutes, I want something like 20 minutes if I'm going to select a P-Wash. Wash time, cottons, you can add on more minutes. Uh, it should be 58 minutes now. 10 minutes more, I think. That also being said, if you because you can have intensive intensive ads on ten minutes, that's actually interesting. This has a lot more parameters than my other one, so we're going to push back. Wash time minimum iron again. We can add on more minutes. This is pretty cool. Uh, number programs now. Uh, here we go. So you've got all these. So you've got four. Oh, where did it go? Number of programs. Two or six. Uh, quick wash. Oh, right, so you can switch them on and off. Right, number of programs. Quick wash. Hygiene. On. Sluice. On. Disinfection. Uh, we can't actually have disinfection, but you can switch them on. P wash, select via the program menu, uh, permanent option. We don't want permanent option, we don't want it on all the time. Second P wash, kitchen linen. So if you had the kitchen linen program, it does one. Um, with this, it does two. So it does a rinse first. It should be selected like two. Yeah, that's fine. Minimum is two as well. I can't remember. If pre so pre-rinse on this, um, I'm not sure too much, but I don't know if, if I select pre-rinse, am I allowed to have it as an option? I'm going to select it on and then see what happens. Because remember, I can switch all these off at some point. So we know what anti-crease um, on, so it will do it indefinitely. Spin free of charge. We haven't got the. Um, 
coin kit, so it shouldn't matter anyway. Lock. We want it three minutes after cancelling, actually. We don't want it to ever lock, really. Oh, I don't really matter. External dispense we don't have. It is, that's what you can put it in. They've added something else at some point, or tried to. Number of detergent, we haven't got any. No detergent. Temp reduction. Don't want that on. Controls. Uh, so we've got... They are GB with shortcut keys and sluice. So... This is all to do with this display. So like my other one has the on off button. That's the only difference. But you can also have it without any shortcut controls, but you have that. And then you got the opposite where you have no dial and you just have the shortcut buttons. Delay start payment system. Delay start. Delay start will allow you to have it. Payment system off. Superlizer level code again. Oh, right, code not required. So, what I'm gonna do because I don't know the actual code, I'm gonna set it to uh, a standard of 125 balance chart. Ah, okay, so this is so you can set either a 5.5 kilo or a 6.5. It's a five, it's a PW055, so it's a 5.5 kilo machine, not a 6.5. Uh, heater rating, this is important, right? Heater rating, it's set to 5300 watts, but now we've only got a 2600 watts because we cut down to half. So we're going to select that now. So it looks like you have a 3000 watts. You can't do 3,000 watts. 2,600 times 2 is 5,200 watts. Uh, 2, 100 watts. So it looks like you have 2,100 watts. You can have 2, 2,100 watts. A 2,600 watts. A 3,000 single watt wattage. A 46, which would be a 21 and 26 added together. And a 5,300 watt. That's what I wanted to do. Heat rating. Turn that. Heating. Oh, uh, on. Drum lighting, obviously on. Uh, optimize energy. No idea. MRSA plus, factory default. Ah, that's interesting. You can't change the spin speed on this one. You can't, you can't increase it or decrease it like you call my, uh, well, like on both mine. You can change the spinner for your charge, but not the actual spin speed. Right, well, I'm going to go to... Um, oh, standby. I want it off. You can't change the spin speed on this, which is quite annoying. It's still only 1,400. Uh... Cotton's hygiene is now 1 hour 26. If I go into kind of uni, 1 hour 15. Hmm. Oh, that's because I've added 10 minutes. That's right. So I've added 10 minutes for the heating and 10 minutes for the wash. Wow, intensive really ups it to like, wow, quite a lot. Um, I may turn it off then if intensive is going to do that. I was like, minimum iron still 51 minutes now. Uh, so this is 1,000 RPM. So this is the old... So this is quite old now. So you've got this one. Uh, this is a lot older. This is like the one I filmed about 10 years ago. Maybe even longer than that. It's because it's uh, 1,000 RPM, at, you know, on minimum iron. Whereas, like, if you go to 60 here as well, it only adds on, like, five minutes. Nowadays, it's completely different on mm, the other one. It goes up to 1200 RPM, and minimum is a longer cycle. Uh, there's also a quick wash 
which is bas basically it is the proper quick wash. This is the actual quick wash. This is from the washer, like, you know, where you can have up to 40 and stuff like that. Um, what was isn't available though on the quick wash, which is quite odd. So anyway, you got thermos, disinfection, um, a neck. So thermo disinfection's at 85. It will heat and hold, and it looks like it's five minutes longer than a standard 95. This is quite cool, actually. And then chemical disinfection, it's 70, but it uses, you're supposed to use sort of a basic bleach. Kitchen linen looks exactly the same as a 95 wash, only one minute longer. Hmm? Uh, kitchen light, linen, table linen, curtains, pillows, outerwear, proofing, denim, toweling, extra rinse. Extra rinse is literally a rinse and spin. Rather than called rinse and spin. Uh, sluice, high and low. Don't. So I'm going to go back into it at some point. That's hygiene. Hygiene. Ah, I see. Hygiene is the maintenance cycle. Well, sort of a maintenance cycle. Basically what it does, if it's been used at less than 60 degrees, it will ask you to do that first every time. So hygiene might be turned off so it doesn't keep getting reminded. Uh, Jane, spin and back. Uh, we'll take sluice. We can't have sluice. It allows you to have sluice, but we can't have sluice because we're on a pump. We're not on a... Uh, what you call it? Sluice high is 75 degrees, sluice low is 65 degrees. So, i uh, probably recommission this then. Right, so Cotton's Uni is now an hour five. It may be because I've selected my heater rating, that's going to bump it up. If you select cold only, as opposed to hot and cold, it will add on 10 minutes. So I think both of them put together is resulting in uh, a cycle taking 16 minutes longer. It doesn't mean all the main wash though. Bolt intensive now is, wow, proper intensive. We'll take intensity off and we're gonna chase something else out. Extras, we're gonna select pre-wash and now it should be something like an hour 25. It's 20 minutes now for a pre-wash as opposed to eight minutes. Yeah, and it heats to 45 degrees. they will try to. So we're getting there anyway. So we've partially commissioned this now. Let me try something. Now we're going to select spin only. So we're taking all the sluice and the disinfection because we don't need them. The motor noise is slightly different on this compared to my other one. Like my other one. Because my other one is a lot quieter than this. But anyway, that's now commissioned. How cool is that? 